Okay, welcome everybody to the uh, uh, March 2023 imaging meeting. Tonight's topic will be about H alpha, hydrogen alpha imaging. And uh, all those who are gathered here, I uh, just ask to uh, uh, see uh, what uh, you've got as far as your favorite uh, hydrogen alpha images. And what do you think uh, was your uh, hardest hydrogen alpha image to take? And uh, what plans do you have um, in the future when it comes to this wavelength? For those of you who don't know, um, hydrogen alpha is a, a wavelength that's emitted at uh, 656 nanometers, and uh, it's emitted when hydrogen under uh, diff, uh, uh, under uh, different uh, uh, circumstances uh, has its electrons uh, uh, knocked to a higher energy level. Anytime that happens, an electron will also kick out a photon, in this case, uh, for hydrogen, we're going to be talking about the hydrogen alpha photon, and again, that's at 656 uh, nanometers. So um, I'm going to go ahead and go first. Let me see if I can pull up something here. So uh, the biggest things I like doing are taking uh, wide field images in H alpha, and so far, um, the two that uh, best examples I have are of uh, the uh, Orion molecular cloud and uh, the uh, uh, the Cygnus uh, air, uh, constellation. So let me put up my share here. Here's the uh, Orion uh, uh, molecular cloud. And so uh, this was taken with a 85 uh, millimeter uh, Canon EF lens uh, with the Star Arizona uh, adapter that allows you to connect to uh, using a bayonet mount for e uh, Canon EF lenses. And uh, the uh, hydrogen alpha filter I was using here was made by Bader and it's their quote ultra low or excuse me, uh, ultra narrow uh, band hydrogen alpha filter. It's supposedly it's able to uh, image uh, this, uh, within three and a half nanometers on either side of the uh, a three and a half nanometer uh, a range centering on the uh, 656 nanometer <laughs> hydrogen alpha wavelength. So uh, the camera that was used here was an ASI 183 uh, monocam and uh, uh, if you look at uh, if people, anybody who has experience with this, the nice thing about it is that uh, it's a very tiny, uh, tiny sensor, and uh, but it's yet yet it's uh, 20 megapixels. So not only is it a tiny sensor, it has very tiny uh, pixels as well. In this case, uh, for the ASI 183, uh, when we're talking pixel size, uh, it's only uh, 2.4 microns in size. So it's really tiny and. Uh, uh, the nice thing, uh, the biggest benefit of that is it allows you to pack uh, more arc, uh, less arc seconds per pixel and gives you a nice resolved uh, image of uh, large sections in the night sky without uh, sacrificing, um, uh, or excuse me, let me say, say it this way, without uh, by cons uh, conserving the resolution of what you're looking at. So, like for example, if this is 85 millimeters and I were to use my uh, ASI, uh, Oh gosh, what is that? ASI 294, which is a, a color camera, its uh, pixel size is almost uh, double that. So uh, for me to get the same resolution arc second per, uh, per pixel, I would have to use a 200 or uh, 85. So what is that? 160 plus uh, 10, 170 millimeter lens to get the same effect. So that's the reason why I like the ASI 183. The downside of it, of course, is, is that, well, the pixels are small and then two, um, it's, I believe it only has a 12 bit uh, 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 of dynamic range. So it's not able to ca capture as many shades uh, as, uh, as a 16 bit uh, 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 camera, such as the, I think it's the SI2600. That's all the rage right now. Uh, but, uh, you know, I like what, what it could do. And uh, again, this is a, uh, a uh, two panel image, uh, so uh, the uh, molecular cloud area. What I hope to do later on is expand upon this and uh, go, you know, up, down, uh, left, right, caddy corner to all sides of this image that you're seeing right now um, and uh, try to get a better look at the uh, Ryan molecular cloud because all we have right now, as you can see, is just the belt uh, to the upper uh, right 
and then quote sword area, which is where the uh, Great Orion Nebula is uh, right now. Well, right now, uh, well, it's been there for a while. Let's say it like that. So, <laughs> anyways, okay, so. Okay, so moving along. Uh, so again, I told you that uh, mosaics uh, uh, of hydrogen alpha are my favorite to do. So let me uh, pull up my Flickr page here. I should have downloaded this earlier, but uh, uh, let's see. Uh, so uh, I mentioned that I had taken uh, hydrogen alpha or I did the complete uh, SHO palette of uh, Cygnus. Uh, area that includes the uh, uh, the crescent nebula. The uh, let's see, let me see if I can get this bigger. Hello. Okay. That's a little too much. We'll just look at it like that. Okay. Hold on one second. Thank you for your patience and. Here we go. So this one uh, was a sort of, uh, um, well, it, it basically was the same camera and the same lens. So 85 millimeters and ASI 183. However, this is a much uh, bigger section of the sky. So this is a three panel image. Uh, one of the things you, I had to keep track of is that when I, when you start to use such short focal lengths and uh, especially with a, a small sensor, uh, the curvature of the celestial sphere, sphere can start uh, uh, causing problems uh, as far as like framing uh, the area that you would like. So in reality, uh, this is three panels. However, there are parts of it that I had to crop out because uh, the uh, uh, the whole uh, large immense area that I was uh, that I was uh, imaging um, gave up uh, uh, mismatched areas at the very fringe, and it was curved at the very fringe uh, whenever uh, everything was aligned correctly in each of the uh, the three panels. But anyway, so this is the Cygnus area. And uh, so uh, you have uh, the Crescent Nebula right there on the uh, center uh, right. And then down here on the lower left, you have uh, North American Nebula followed by the uh, uh, Pelican Nebula. And uh, then, of course, uh, the centerpiece, uh, as far as stars go in uh, Cygnus, you have uh, sort of, uh, I guess, uh, Mid left of center, <laughs> the, uh, the star of uh, 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 crap. What's the star called? Um, I can't remember all of a sudden. Uh, it's part of the summer triangle. It, Deneb, there we go. Deneb, it's uh, part of the summer uh, triangle. And uh, this one right here, you can see if you look at Deneb and look at about uh, the one o'clock position relative uh, to Deneb being the center, you can probably see there's another nebula there. I want to say. Uh, that's SH2208. I'm probably wrong, but it's an SH2, uh, a Sharpless uh, 2 object uh, of some sort, a nebula. And uh, it's uh, uh, at longer focal lengths, it's a popular target um, in this area of, uh, of the sky during the summer. So, uh, but anyway, uh, so yeah, but just for fun to uh, uh, demonstrate what I was talking about as far as. Uh, um, um, taking pictures of the night sky in wide field doesn't have anything to do with the discussion of uh, hydrogen alpha. Uh, here's uh, an image. So Mike Mantini wanted to see what it looked like as far as the individual channels go. So, uh, see, do you guys see that? The new color image? Yeah, okay, good. Okay, so yeah, you see the color image there to the, the finished product basically on the uh, on the right, but uh, on the uh, left, you see the individual channels, and you can see how they're curved slightly there at the bottom. And because the corners jut out there on the on the bottom, you obviously have to crop that out because, well, everybody's images are always you know right angles, right? I mean, of course, you know, people are, are can be uh, creative as far as framing their images uh, for for later, what for whatever reason. But uh, but anyway, so that's hydrogen alpha now. Uh, as far as uh, my favorite hydrogen alpha image. Now, also sort of my favorite, but I think is the hardest uh, hydrogen alpha images to take. Let's see, let me get out of this. Uh, I just finished uh, processing a uh, time lapse of it, and I'll show that later on in the meeting. Uh, there we go. Passport. And 
set. Yeah. Okay, it is all right. There we go. So share screen. Okay, solar. To me, that's the hardest to uh, get uh, perfect H alpha imaging because solar, uh, uh, when it comes to H alpha, it's always going to involve a, uh, 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 some sort of mechanism to keep the, uh, the narrow, narrowness of the hydrogen alpha that you're trying to uh, record from, from the sun. Uh, because in most cases, uh, when, like, like, for example, I'm going back to the uh, previous nebula, uh, large nebula uh, mosaics that I just showed you, uh, that's with a filter that's uh, three and a half uh, uh, nanometers, right? Uh, or not three and a half nanometers, but it centers on the 565 nanometer wavelength that is hydrogen alpha, but it lets in light um, in a three and a half nanometer section of the spectrum where hydrogen alpha is found. Now, when it comes to, to imaging uh, the sun, uh, you need to uh, get absolutely sit as close to uh, 565 nanometers as possible. So this was taken with a, uh, a, uh, a LUNT, uh, I think it's called the LS80 THA, um, I guess that's a 80 millimeter triplet, hydrogen alpha is what that's supposed to be supposed to stand for, but uh, uh, what I'm getting at is that the uh, narrowness of uh, this filter was 0.7 angstroms, and an angstrom, in, when you convert it to, uh, 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 what is it, uh, uh, nanometers, uh, an angstrom is um, uh, one-tenth of a nanometer, so this uh, is covering, this filter covers an area centered around 606 nanometers, that is hydrogen alpha, uh, at 0 0.07 nanometers. Okay, so uh, one thing to keep straight here, yeah, I'm throwing around the uh, the, uh, the unit nanometers, right? But uh, uh, as when it comes to talking about the way actual wavelength, nanometer is the reading of where the uh, wavelength comes from. Okay, 656 nanometers is where you find the hydrogen alpha wavelength. It doesn't mean that. Uh, from 655 to 657, that's all hydrogen alpha. No, that's not correct. It's where 656 nanometers is where you find hydrogen alpha, okay? So uh, one of the ways I try to describe this concept to some people is that you may remember back in uh, uh, middle school geometry, you have a, a, line graph, uh, a line and any point on a line just shows you a location. It has no thickness, it just shows you a location. So the location of hydrogen alpha is centered at 656 nanometers. Actually it's 656 uh, nanometers point such and such. So, but, but anyway, so you get the point. Now, uh, the reason why uh, uh, imaging the sun is uh, so difficult is that because it's so, it's so dependent upon you centering it on 656 nanometers, uh, your your filter, which is also already extremely narrow, uh, can be uh, subjected to uh, different elements of uh, the atmosphere. Okay, so uh, the way this uh, this guy works is that if you uh, the best way I can describe it, if you look at a uh, uh, again, you've probably learned this uh, the concept of refraction in um, middle school. If you see like a, a beam of light or even a laser just going through a fish tank or the surface of the water, it gets refracted, it gets bent to the side, right? So um, in the case of uh, the, the Lunt telescope, uh, hydrogen alpha telescope that I used to take a picture of this, um, it uses what's termed a, uh, as a, a pressure tuner. So uh, everybody knows that differences in uh, pressure, which in the, or, or the thickness of uh, the atmosphere, can refract light. So uh, if you are able to uh, center uh, your, uh, what is it, uh, your uh, pressure tuner at 656 nanometer by compensating what's going on with the atmosphere that's throwing it off of, of the, uh, the band of 656 nanometers, the filter off of the band of 656 nanometers, you get back what's termed on band by adjusting the pressure. And so, uh, but the problem with that is because I like to call, uh, uh, creating uh, time lapses is that um, the it can, uh, uh, conditions with the atmosphere, whether it be temperature and pressure or pressure, 
uh, can change over time. And uh, because of that, if you're trying to do a time lapse like I uh, like to do, uh, well, you start to uh, shift away from 656 nanometers and the nice contrast that you can get from uh, taking images uh, of the uh, hydrogen alpha wavelength of the sun, it, it can start to become fuzzy looking. And it's not because you're out of focus, it's just because the filter is falling out of band with the 656 nanometer wavelength. So anyways, um, yeah, that's all I have to show. So uh, sorry uh, sorry if I talked your ears off, but uh, yeah, that's uh, those are my favorite images. And then the sun is uh, my most hated image, but I still love imaging it. So who would like to go next? I go to one. All right, have fun. Let's see what you got. Oh, let's uh, let's see share here. Uh, let's see. Is that coming up? Yeah, beautiful. All right. Uh, uh, this is all on my, a Flickr album I made for tonight, so I'll go through these quickly. Uh, Flaming Star Nebula, uh, H Alpha. I think this was with my uh, 135 Rokinon, probably on my ATIC 460X a while back before I got uh, the 2600mm. And so that all of these are three to five minute exposures for a couple of hours uh, from my driveway here in Durham. And uh, with a three three nanometer uh, chroma H alpha filter. And processing, all everything processed in Pixon site, that sort of thing. All right, this is uh, one of my versions of Orion, obviously, uh, trying to get a lot of the nebulosity in the, in the areas you don't usually see the nebulosity on these outer areas here and in the middle here between the running man and the and Orion. Uh, let's see what else. And this is uh, uh, SH232. I was just searching around in the in the in the books for something I'd never looked at before. I didn't see very many things and so I just aimed it at this to see what I could get. And this was uh, with the 2600 and the three nanometer and the my Stellar View 102 uh, on the Orion Atlas. And this, this is 65 minute exposure, so that's five hours. This is very this this one part of it is a very dim object, and so it takes quite a while to to, to get anything on this one. Yes, yeah, Steve. Yeah. So. One thing, a, a comment on this image, and I'm wondering if you probably noticed it too, in the individual, uh, was this more than one sub? I mean, I didn't see it down there in the oh, caption where you said this. Right there, it says a, a 65 minute subs. Oh, oh okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So okay. anyway, yeah. So, you yeah, know, but one thing that uh, I'm wondering if you noticed uh, when you started imaging it, did you notice that that one knot of nebulosity on the lower uh, left was like overwhelming everything? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. So <laughs> I tried to image this area uh, before, and yeah. I thought that was the actual faint part. Oh, uh, that's at the upper right, and I centered upon that. That was with the uh, 428E, uh, 428A tick. Yeah. Uh, a long time yeah. ago, and yeah, so yeah, SOB, I was completely yeah. off, but I, I yeah. Did, I did not see the structure on the upper right here at all in the sub uh, when I started doing it. When I did a three minute exposure, I saw nothing. And then the five, I saw that there was something there, and so I took a lot of them to get anything like this at all from that thing, so. Well, and the other thing that uh, I'm wondering if you're gonna do, with yeah. that, are you? Do you think you're going to go and revisit that area and do like a mosaic? Because uh, that's the same. Uh, wasn't that the uh, same uh, 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 equipment that you used to do the flaming star? Uh, no, the flaming star was older, I think. I, oh, I, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, you said that. You said it was the 460, right? This is with the with the 2600 now. Somebody okay. All right. Back and forth for the 2600 to the 460. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not using the 460 much anymore. I have it on another system, but I might do double 
double things on something at some point. Because I have filters for both and, and telescopes and mounts and everything. I have two, two systems that I can put on the same thing each night if I choose to. But I haven't done that yet because I just haven't had enough weather to do it. Okay. Uh, this one, this is cheating a little bit. This is the, the uh, one part of this, uh, the white part is, is just luminosity of Andromeda. And then I did a hydrogen alpha on it, uh, on this, uh, three hours of, of 10 minute exposure of hydrogen alpha, just because I wanted to see the star forming regions in Andromeda. And it came out pretty well, I think. Uh, I, I, I wish I'd done the oxygen given the discoveries that have been made recently. Uh, about oxygen in this area, but I didn't do that then. I wish I had now, because maybe I would have seen something as well. Uh, so we'll see. I don't know. I've been talking to some people about about how to do that. Uh, okay, this is the Spaghetti Nebula. This was with the uh, 2600 also, and the same setup. Uh, this is nine 20 minute exposures, because this was really dim uh, for three hours. And so that's and it goes a little bit outside the field of view of this particular setup. So I couldn't quite get it all in. And it needs, it needs many more hours than this to do anything with this, but uh, it's, fun, it's fun to try. To Would do. you say that's probably the hardest one you've ever imaged? Uh, this and the dragon, the dragonfly, or no, what's it called? The dragon nebula in Cygnus, I think is really hard to, it's extremely dim. Uh, yeah, this one's very hard, it takes many, many hours. I haven't got anything near anything. I mean, I think he has something on this, but I, I haven't done that again yet. I want to, though. Uh, okay, then this is uh, one of my versions of the Horsehead Flame area. Uh, this is uh, three hours with, this, with the same setup again. Uh, 36 five minute exposures of that area. And it's, it's, it's fun to do because you see all this other structure up here that you don't normally see in a lot of things. There's all kinds of interesting little bits and pieces. This piece here is interesting. There, there's a lot of interesting uh, nebulosity here that you don't see unless you do a really long exposures. Uh, so that's that's fun to do. Uh, and then the, the Veil Nebula, just the hydrogen alpha part. I've done all the others uh, without just showing the hydrogen alpha one. And this is fun to do because you see all these really wispy structures here. And this was what? Uh, Basically the same. And this is with a Stella View 70 millimeter scope, 0.8 focal reducer. This is eight 10 minute exposures for 80 minutes. So it's not very much. But you, you, to get this kind of wispy part, you really need long exposures to see that in, in H alpha. Steve? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, so you said you had a, a you know, off subject a little bit. You used your 70 millimeter. Um, Stellar so view for that uh, veil nebula. What, and you said you used a focal length, what did that come out to be? Uh, or a focal length, focal reducer. What did a focal length come out to be? I think it's a 0.8 focal reducer. I think it's like 400 maybe. I, I'd have okay. to, I, don't, I don't honestly remember. Whatever the Stellar, you know, 0.8 times whatever the Stellar view is, but I don't remember what it is now. It's been so long since I've used some of these things, I've forgotten the numbers. <laughs> Uh, okay, that's this is the uh, the Tulip Nebula. Uh, I was trying, I, I really did, I was going to try to get this, this supernova remnant stuff in here, but I didn't, it doesn't come out in this one. But it's, I don't think it's really, it's not really a hydrogen alpha target for that part. But, but there, I mean, the black, there's a supernova thing here with a black hole. In it. And it's, it's a fun area to do this. It's a lot of nebulosity in that area. And then the obvious, the Elephant Trunk Nebula. Uh, this is uh, uh, one and a half hours. Uh, and then this one, this is a hard one. Uh, SH224, so Supernova in Auriga. Uh, three hours and 20 minutes of exposure. This is another hard one. And I reverse it because some of these things that are dim can, can be more easily seen when you, when you flip the black and white uh, around. And so that this is an interesting thing to try as well. This is difficult. But I, I would tend to more than 10 hours probably would be good, even in just hydrogen alpha. 
uh, and this is the uh, I, I see seven four seventeen in Origa also. This is a hundred minutes of uh, 10, 10 minute exposures, and it also inverted. It's all kinds of interesting structures and things in there too. And then this is this is a CTB one in in HA. This is also very very dim. Uh, ten minute exposures for three hours. It's it's very pretty in color. I I I did the color on it, but I don't have that in this list. Okay, and then this is the hardest, of course, and I've shown this before. This is uh, 86 panels of H alpha done with my, my uh, so it's 33,000 by 14,000 pixels, uh, 120 hours of exposures. Uh, this was done with my, uh, my uh, Rokinon 135 uh, on, the, uh, on the ATIC 460EX. Uh, over a space of three months or something like that, going all the way from the from the Vale all the way over to Cassiopeia area over here, and the Pac-Man and those kind of things, uh, and the lobster. And well, damn, Steve, where's the rest of it? That's <laughs> <laughs> Where's the rest? I I haven't been as ambitious as you, Chris. I didn't do the color part. I. I I don't think I could have, given the, the weather and whatnot. So I limited to myself to H alpha on this one. Maybe someday. And then, oh, sorry. Then this is um, uh, the Flying Bat Nebula. And I, the squid that's inside here, I, I have gotten sort of, but that's that may be the most difficult thing to get because you need oxygen, the oxygen filter for the, to get the squid that's inside this. And, and that's many, many, many hours of things that I, I tried it. I sort of got it, but it wasn't very good. And so I'm, I'm not happy with it at all. I have to do it. And this is this was with the other camera too. So this is uh, before I got the 2600. So I, I just have to try this again with the 2600. It's another very hard target. And then uh, you wanted to show recent things. This is just uh, about 45 minutes it's like nine five minute exposures of M101. This is with a luminosity filter, just to see if I could do anything through my driveway that wasn't narrow band. And so that's this is just very last couple of weeks when I had it, it, uh, some leftover time to aim it at it just to give it a try when it's got out from under from around the trees at my house. So I'll keep working on this uh, as time goes by. Uh, and then this is another H alpha. This is this is Lowers Nebula. This is also about an hour's worth of five minute exposures on this one. And that's an interesting one too. I'll, I will continue on doing this because it's kind of pretty in color, but I've only did the hydrogen alpha on that. Um, and it was in a good place in the sky so I could get it, you know, get enough hours on it. And uh, let's go back here now. For, okay, this is, this is my version of, the, of a mosaic for the Orion region. Uh, this is 20 panels uh, uh, going all the way from Sharpless 264 all the way over to Rigel and those areas over there and the Barnard's loop and whatnot. And then this is what I, and this was done, gosh, in 2019 now. And then I took it to my colleague uh, uh, in, uh, at UNC and he, he, and I showed this before too. This is the radio data from the same area taken with a radio telescope in Virginia, or maybe West Virginia. And so uh, Dan Riker and I gave me the, the, the data and we, we put it together to show where the radio comes from in the, uh, against the hydrogen alpha in that region. And so Barnard's Slip is very, uh, has a lot of radio as do the nebulae uh, in, in within Orion. And then that's another, this is now uh, HSO, for for the um, for set and flame nebula, so that's three filters. That's the hydrogen alpha that I showed before, plus the other two, and, and with with my weird notion of color. But when you do this, of course, you get all these interesting things, like like a big like another big horse head or whatever you want to call it here, and then this structure here comes out very nice, and also it's kind of interesting to put all the colors together uh, in that too. 
Okay, that's all I've got, Chris. All right, very good. Who would like to go next? Stop sharing. That was great, Steve, by the way. Yeah, that's okay, well, quite a, yeah, quite ambitious there with all those big mosaics. So who would like can, to go next? I can give it a try. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, I can. Oh, only hosts can share in this meeting. Maybe I can. Really? I never tried this on the phone. Oh, yeah, and Steve is a co-host, so. Okay, try it now. All right, there we go. Um, let's try to share the screen. Okay, I don't know. Are you seeing this or am I not there yet? Uh, no, I just see your name still. Yeah, all okay. right. Okay, I think I need to give it permission. Again? Huh. No, for, for me on my phone. Hold on. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm having network problems here, so, you know, it's a little little fun. Um, I went with color images. Oh, can, can you see the horse head? My very early. Yeah, we can. Okay. Um, I went with color images and, you know, in the theme of first, uh, hardest and favorite. So this isn't technically my very first with hydrogen alpha, but it's the first where I could see hydrogen alpha clearly. Uh, this is with the barn door tracker, um, Canon EOS Rebel SL2, which is not H alpha modified. It barely can see hydrogen alpha. And uh, the kit you know, 75 millimeter to 300 millimeter zoom lens. And I'm, I'm 100% sure that I was at 300 millimeters with this on the barn door, which wasn't the smartest thing, but I was having fun. Um, I kick myself, Kurt. I don't have the raw data for this anymore um, or any of the data from back then. Um, it would have been fun to go back and try and reprocess it. Anyway, uh, I got the... Uh, ASI 533MC Pro, and I have the Zena Star 73. And this is combination of data from uh, with a uh, UVIR cut filter and the L Extreme filter for hydrogen alpha. Uh, I this was um, a bit, uh, over a year and a half ago. I don't know, maybe two, almost two years ago. And I went back and reprocessed it and save your data, folks, <laughs> if you don't, because this is, um, you know, pretty big difference. So before, I thought I was pretty happy with it. And then after, same exact data set, um, more knowledge, better tools. And yeah, pretty happy with how that turned out. Uh, as far as hard, so still with the Zenith Star 73, which is a doublet. And I had the 2600 uh, mm Pro. Um, this is in you know a show image, and it was really hard to process, really hard to get any kind of interesting colors and get contrast right. This is the, the top is the cone nebula, and it's the Christmas tree cluster and a whole bunch of other stuff I don't know the names of. Uh, didn't really like the way it turned out, and I reprocessed it recently. Uh, let me check how much time this was. This, oh, I didn't put notes and my network is really wonky. Uh, reprocessed it recently and it came out a whole lot better. Uh, I used um, some of the new pixel math scripts that have come out from various people and all the new tools for denoising and you know, generalized hyperbolic stretch, which really, really helped with something with lower contrast like this, but uh, pretty cool result. So that one was hard, took quite a while. This one's probably the hardest thing that I've ever processed, uh, pinwheel. And the reason why it was hard is because I was going for a, uh, an, a color image with the hydrogen alpha, but I also got 
luminance. So it's L-H-A-R-G-B and figuring out how to combine all those things in a way that didn't result in a terrible hot mess was, uh, was a lot of fun. I started processing it probably about this time last year. I put it down on and off for three or four months before I finally figured out a way that worked out well. So, um, and I bet if I, I went back and reprocessed it again, I would get better results. I don't like necessarily the, the it's kind of a harsh contrast between the galaxy and the background sky, but I haven't quite uh, uh, felt like uh, going through that pain again. But, and then my favorite is uh, Xenostar. Uh, so the previous one was the uh, Esprit 120 uh, and uh, the 2600 mm. This is the Xenostar 73 and 2600 mm uh, show. And um, I like this one because of the, the flame, like, you know, nice and flamey looking, but then the tadpole uh, in the top right there. I did um, a different color palette and then blended the two because uh, I really liked the, the contrast. And I, again, I went back, I hadn't really, you know, in looking back at my old stuff, I didn't particularly like the star colors, especially the bright stars down the middle. So I went back and reprocessed it and got this out of it, which I, I thought shows a lot more, with a lot better control over the star color. Um, it just looks, looks a lot cleaner. So. That's all I got, and hopefully I can figure out how to stop sharing. Where's Zoom? All right, thanks. Yeah, I was about to knock you off, so. <laughs> <laughs> that would have worked. Yeah, that would have worked too. But actually, I never had to do that before, so yeah, I had to look. Uh, Okay, uh, who'd like to go next? Very nice, uh, Naveen, anyway. Anyone? No? Okay, well, that was short. Okay, so, uh, all right, so we get into the second half of our meeting, and uh, this is the part where we uh, present images that uh, we have taken uh, uh, since uh, last meeting, February, and, uh, I'll go ahead and go first. And Chris, can I ask a quick so, question about the hydrogen altruism stuff? The, yeah, sure. Uh, go ahead. With with the colored camera, I've not done any of that yet, so I didn't have anything to share tonight. But what what if anything do you gain or get? I've got the five thirty three now MC, and so just was wondering what sort of what to do with it, or get some filters or not, or Anybody has any thoughts about that? Well, I mean, we might get something like the L Ultimate or the L Extreme or one of those kind of things that go with the nose with a color camera that that then have that's my guess is what you would do with that if you want to get some kind of hydrogen alpha uh, image. Okay. So uh, otherwise, hydrogen alpha with a color camera, I think you need one of those kind of filters. You wouldn't, you wouldn't put you know, a monochrome camera on a color camera. Right, right. That's what I was trying uh, to. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, uh, you, I don't know, maybe you already noticed, so forgive me if uh, this is old news, but uh, it's like uh, if you have a color, um, you probably understand what the Bayer matrix of a mm -hmm. uh, color camera um, yes. uh, sensor is. So, in the case of. Um, what is it? Uh, uh, oh gosh, I think Chris. Um, in the case of a color, uh, a Bayer matrix sensor, uh, when it comes to hydrogen alpha, because it's in the red section of uh, uh, of the spectrum, uh, that kind of uh, means that your Bayer matrix only a quarter of those pixels are really going to work. If you want to, if you understand what I'm saying. Uh, you can pick yes. hydrogen alpha up in those other sensors, but because uh, each uh, or sensors, each of those other pixels, because you have reds, two greens, and and, and a blue. So there's for each. Uh, 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 there's a term for it. But I would if I'm going to make up uh, make up or I said for each uh, quarter of uh, the pixel plane, it's a uh, 
you got uh, you have greens and then you have another set of greens and then you have a blue set and a red set of uh, pixels. So there's more green in there than there is red, uh, red and blue. But the red ones, because uh, it's only one quarter of your pick uh, of your uh, sensor that's going to pick up uh, uh, the red channel. Uh, that's probably what's going to pick up hydrogen alpha best. Um, that doesn't mean necessarily that the other ones won't. Blue certainly probably would never pick up hydrogen alpha. Blue and uh, green maybe, because these uh, uh, the uh, Bayer matrix uh, uh, array that's over that uh, that color sensor. These are broadband filters, so they're saying okay. Uh, when when the manufacturer goes in and puts a a, a filter over each of those pixels. If they want to put it over, uh, put a green one over it, they say, okay, well, this is a green section of the spectrum and it goes from um, X nanometers to Y nanometers and so on and so forth for uh, for the blue and the red. So, uh, but what Steve mentioned, that's probably your best bet is to go for an L extreme uh, filter, which uh, um, I think it's like, there, there's another term for it. I want to say it's like bi narrow band or something like that. Uh, but, but anyway, um, dual band. Yeah, uh, dual band. Thank you. Yeah. So it's called dual. Yeah, dual band. Uh, anyway, look it up for one of those. That's your best bet as far as picking up hydrogen alpha. Now, dual band meaning two. It's also meant to also, uh, to uh, 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 tone down all the other colors except for hydrogen alpha, and then. Uh, oxygen three, which is more in the cyan section of uh, the spectrum as far as wavelengths go in color. But uh, yeah, that's what I would recommend going with is uh, uh, like, like well, Steve recommended it first, but yeah, uh, do that, so. Yeah, so it's on, it's on the chat now for the uh, OPTs, uh, uh, the L ultimate uh, three nanometer one, which is the most recent one as far as I know. And I have one of these, and so uh, that's one possible. There's also other OPT type ones, and then there are a bunch of other. My recommendation is go on YouTube and look up look up uh, filters for uh, one shot color cameras. There are a bunch of videos of people evaluating the different ones and what they can do. And what, there's it's sort of what you what you gain and what you yeah yeah. It's problems with star halos and that kind of thing and. And the L Extreme had some problems with star halos, and the Ultimate supposedly is better at it. But then some people have found it's not, you know. So you need to research it a little bit before you at least shell out three hundred eighty-nine dollars for a for a filter, you know, that kind of thing. And then there are other filters that are tri-band and that kind of thing too. So you know, it's just it's a question of how much you want to spend. I know John Sadler bought one. I think it was like a thousand dollars or something. Uh, so, and I don't know whether it worked for him well or not, but I haven't seen anything. But, um, you know, there, and there are other uh, companies now that are making these as well. And so I think the Coov, the lazy geek guy on the YouTube has evaluated some of these, but there are lots of other people who have done it as well. I think Adam Block has evaluated them or he's shown, you know, it's, it's a lot, a lot of places to look to get ideas. Perfect. Thank you, Steve. Okay, uh, anybody else have any questions about narrowbands uh, or hydrogen alpha imaging? No? Okay. All right, so I, yeah, we'll go ahead and move on to the second half of the meeting where we show uh, the images that we uh, have taken since last, uh, um, since last month. And uh, so I'll go ahead and go first. Now, the first uh, image I'm going to show um, was not taken at all last month, so I guess uh, uh, I'm lying in that respect. But uh, let's see um, if I can get it to come up here. Okay, so um, come on, you can do it. So, sort of to like go on with the discussion uh, earlier with uh, narrowband uh, or uh, hydrogen alpha imaging. So uh, if you weren't there for the uh, for the processing like get together that we did, uh, um, what was that, three weeks ago? Uh, what we did is uh, everybody got together and most of the things that we were processing were of uh, 
uh, of the comet that came through recently. Uh, I, however, was there and I was starting to uh, uh, delve more into using PixInsight and trying to get away from Photoshop, but uh, it's difficult. <laughs> so, so what you see here, uh, if you remember the uh, hydrogen alpha image that I showed you, uh, if uh, this actually is a three panel area of the, uh, a three panel image of the same area. Uh, the reason why it came out to be three panels for, for hydrogen alpha is that when I went to this area, I first took an image of, uh, first imaged it with uh, the ASI 294 uh, color cam using the 85 millimeter lens. And once I got that, I was like, okay, this is exactly what I want framed and uh, exactly uh, the, the color uh, uh, image that I would want. Uh, I went back and I covered that area with hydrogen alpha. And unfortunately I had to do, make it three panels. I thought it was only going to take two, but it didn't work out that way. So um, anyway, but at the, uh, using uh, 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 PixInsight, um, I, I got, pretty decent at uh, removing um, uh, gradients using DBE because uh, I've barely touched it uh, um, ever since uh, I found out about it. But uh, I started playing with it for quite a bit uh, for the past month and uh, finally got the color uh, image uh, to uh, uh, to look uh, anything uh, worth working with, if you will, because uh, uh, I had set one when I had set this on the tripod or set this on the the mount. Uh, the uh, situated to the south of me was a uh, a housing development, and so there was a large uh, light pollution dome on the uh, 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 lower half of this. So, uh, so learning how to use DBE got rid of that uh, uh, really well, and so to the point I was like, okay, this is great. So then what I did is I went back in and to the color image and I removed the red channel. And why? Well, we just talked about because hydrogen alpha is in the uh, 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 red section of the of the spectrum. And so uh, uh, when I removed the uh, red channel, then I also used hydrogen alpha to uh, be the luminous uh, to create a luminous layer over this. So this is really a uh, HA RGB image. So I'm really happy how it uh, turned out. And like I was saying earlier, uh, what I want to do is I want to go and uh, cover everything from uh, more southeast, west, uh, southwest, southeast, and northwest, northeast of this uh, area. I try to, um, like I said, try to capture most of the uh, Orion molecular cloud. Uh, kind of like what uh, Steve did with his, uh, his H-alpha and uh, radio uh, data that he made and see how far I can get it. So. Uh, yeah, my goal is to get to, uh, I can't remember, what did you, what'd you call it, Steve, that SH, uh, that Sharpless 2 area at the, at the very top of the head of the constellation? I'm sorry, I forgot what the name of it is. But you, well, you, you do have the Boogie Man Nebula in the upper right, upper left, excuse me. That, the black yeah. right there, that's the Boogie Man Nebula. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that's we, good to know. I didn't even know that. <laughs> that it was just like a regular reflection or just a... Uh, a dark nebula. Yeah, it's bringing so, that, it, maybe we call it the John Wick nebula or something, but uh, that's very the, good. The boogeyman nebula. John Wick. Okay, uh, yeah, so there's that. And then um, let's see, I'm going to attempt to uh, let's see. Chris, have you tried okay. gradient? Have you tried gradient exterminator on that uh, Orion image? No, I haven't. Uh, what did I download? Um, no, I haven't tried gradient. No, the gradients part. No, all of use is uh, DBE or AB now. Uh, that's the only things that I, I'm familiar with. But gradient exterminator in Photoshop, I've never, I never, uh, I never had it. Okay, I have it. If you want to send me a, something to try it. Okay, yeah, sure. I'll send you the color image of that and uh, see if you can get rid of the ugliness there at the bottom. So let's see. All right, so um, that hydrogen alpha image of the sun, um, you remember me complaining about doing a time lapse with it. So I did make a time lapse with it. That was uh, uh, two weeks ago. Uh, well, sort of two weeks ago, it was March 4th. And let's see, where are we? There we go. Let me 
So uh, it's a time lapse of about uh, uh, three hours. It was pretty uneventful. Uh, the uh, prominence that you see off on the uh, on the right side, um, it was really bouncing around. So that was kind of neat. But the uh, the uh, active region that uh, you see, uh, it's the sunspot, uh, the main sunspot group that's at around the 10 o'clock position from the center of the sun there going out to the 10 o'clock position. If you watch it, you'll see it spark white. There you go, there it is. So that was probably an M-class flare right there. That's one of the biggest flares that I've reported. And, and uh, my holy grail, of course, is to do one of these sessions where um, I uh, am able to capture an X-flare, which are huge. So anyways, uh, I did this with, uh, again, with the LS80, uh, 80 millimeter hydrogen alpha uh, uh, solar scope. I did it with, a, and the camera was an ASI 174 mm, well known for taking uh, uh, solar images. And uh, let's see, what else is there? Oh, well, this was on, of course, the AP900 now. But, uh, uh, but anyway, yeah, it was, it was good times and I uh, 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 got a, a new car recently. So that was nice. And I could, I was able to like, just sit in the back of, uh, of the cargo area. It's a, a, a Honda CRV. And uh, I don't know if you, you'll, you'll laugh at this. Here's something funny. If you look at this time lapse, uh, you'll see at, uh, at the very top, it gets cut off there for a second there. And uh I was just in there manually uh, recentering it like once every, oh, like maybe 15 minutes. Well, it was so peaceful back there, I fell asleep. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the sun started drifting off of it a little bit and uh, at the very top of uh, the sun got cut off. Uh, but anyway, yeah, good times. So, okay, that's all I have. Anybody else? I've got some I could share. Awesome, uh, we'll see it. The sharing with the mobile phone is really weird, sorry. Okay. Um, I don't remember when I took all of these. I haven't been able to share images for a while. This is uh, Whale Galaxy and the Crowbar Galaxy, I think it's got a couple different names, nothing really official. Um, not very much data, let me just scroll real quick, so I'm curious. Uh, yeah, 50 minutes, so just playing around. I captured some data on this with the DSLR um, back when I, when I first started out imaging, but this was with the six inch Newtonian in the monochrome camera, so a little bit different experience. Um, this Sorry, I Naveen, what's did, the length of that thing? Uh, it's got a 0.95 reducer, so it ends up at 712 and a half millimeters. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, in, sorry, trying to get this up. In preparation for astronomy days, I played around. So this is early January. Said I haven't been able to share these. I played around with my barn door tracker. I took the P2I Canon um, with the Rokinon 135 millimeter, no filters. Um, the T2I is hydrogen alpha mod and, and pointed at a couple targets just to see what would happen. So this is on the barn door tracker. As you can see, you know, Orion's belt, uh, horse head, flame, great Orion nebula running man. Um, I was really surprised how well it turned out. I mean, of course, you know, I've got things like Blur Exterminator that I want to tell you, Blur Exterminator is like magic. Um, it does a, a lot for for stars. So um, yeah, this was this was a cool result. And another one, ah, hit the wrong button. Oh well. This uh, of course is. Pleiades again with the barn door tracker, same setup, uh, different night, I'm sure. I think I had three or four nights where it was actually clear and stuff was available to see. Um, I I really want to come back to this. So the um, Witch Head Nebula. 
and this wasn't a whole lot of time I had to throw away like half of it from just the, the thing was bad. It was over my roof. So a thermal cruft coming through as well. But um, I've seen some images from, I can't remember who else in the imaging group shared one, um, like five hours with the same uh, lens with, with a, you know, a full frame camera still, but like there's a ton of hydrogen alpha in here. I want to try and get sometime. And then I think, yeah, one more. I've been working on this one for a while, getting the data. This is a triangulum. And this is another one of those, you know, I, I was complaining about my pinwheel. This is a LHA RGB. Um, processed it this afternoon really quickly. And I think I like how it turned out. Um, I, mean, I don't know if I'm gonna go back and play with it, but I haven't published it yet. So, yep, that's what I got. Yeah, I figured you would go after that, uh, that witch head nebula, but not 400 in alpha, but because it's, well, you said you're all about reflection nebula and dust. So, yeah, well, that, so it's like, it's, <laughs> You get double whammy, you get, you know, the dust and interesting nebulosity if you spend a lot of time on it. So we'll see. It's not going anywhere. Very good. It's going around the sun, man. You better get it. <laughs> right. I guess I'm saying it'll be back. Like I, I don't have visibility on it'll it. Like my house yeah. is in the way. Yeah, I understand. That's same conundrum with what I was describing about uh, going around Orion as well. So uh, anyway, okay. Anybody else? No. Okay. All right. So um, I guess that's it for the meeting. Um, uh, we'll uh, let's see. Uh, uh, got some uh, announcements uh, to uh, uh, make, or not announcements, but some business to go over. So where I am today, I'm not actually at home. Uh, Naveen's going to be joining me kind of soon, uh, and right next to me is uh, Anna Vale. She's one of the uh, uh, one of the co-chairs of the club, and uh, she has graciously hunted down uh, some spots where we can get together and have uh, quarterly meetings together. So um, I'm going to announce this uh, on groups IO later, but uh, um, there's a uh, a building here called what is this called the Cherry Building? Cherry Building. Yeah, this is just called the Cherry Building, uh, and uh, uh, so uh, she through some of her contacts, she was able to uh, show us some uh, show me some rooms around here, and the rooms are like plenty huge to have an uh, imaging meeting in. And uh, from what I understand, uh, if you want to bring food uh, or whatever, you can bring food here if you wish. Or what we can also do is do what the club always does when we're done with the meeting, always go out to someplace locally because uh, everybody, uh, the club uh, a lot of times will go to Sammy's and well, this is really like sandwiched sort of between uh, 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 Western Boulevard and um, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, Centennial Campus. So that's uh, about where this uh, area is. And um, so uh, what I would, would like to do is that the next meeting, which is uh, the quarterly image uh, challenge, um, I don't know, are we still going to try to do a hybrid with it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Uh, so Anna says that uh, the AV crew can come in and we can make a hybrid out of it. But so uh, what I thought would be fun is that the next uh, imaging challenge, if you remember, uh, it's uh, uh, called uh, uh, solar system objects. So uh, next uh, uh, challenge, we want to see what you can get as far as uh, uh, imaging a solar system object, whether it, whether it be an asteroid, the moon, planet, uh, the sun. That's probably what I'll end up doing, um, just out of laziness. But uh, uh, but what I thought uh, would be fun to add on to that, since we'll uh, since uh, we can meet in person, is that everybody bring their OTA and their camera. Uh, that they uh, used uh, for uh, capturing the uh, um, the uh, uh, solar system object that, that they that they're going to present, and uh, that way we can see all we can all see firsthand uh, 
uh, what um, what the equipment that we use can do. So I think that'll be kind of fun. So uh, um, yeah, just, uh, what is it? Let's see, hold on. Okay, here we go. So yeah, uh, we'll, we'll post the details on Groups.io. And again, Naveen's gonna be joining us soon and he'll be out here uh, to take a look at some of the rooms and we'll finalize the location of uh, where in the building we're gonna be. It's not a super big building, so it's not like you're gonna get lost to finding where we are. And uh, and there's plenty of parking out front. And uh, so, yeah, we thought uh, we had mentioned this uh, probably almost two years ago, how we would want to do this, where we would uh, keep doing Zoom meetings, but every quarter we would actually get together at some sort of venue. So, uh, Right now, uh, I really think this is a, a, a good uh, environment to uh, uh, to try this out, and uh, the internet here is pretty good. And uh, of course, it's uh, NC State's internet. And uh, uh, yeah, so uh, like for you guys to come over and uh, show us your equipment, show us your images, and we'll see uh, uh, how everybody likes it. So, uh, anyways, well, that's all I have. Uh, is there anybody else? So, am I missing anything? No? Okay. Anna says I'm not missing anything. That's good. Um, because I tend to forget too much. But uh okay. Uh so yeah, the next uh imaging meeting. Oh yeah, there's one one little detail I forgot. Uh let's see, let me bring this up here. The next imaging meeting was tent tentatively gonna be on the 20th. Uh but uh uh well my uh birthdays <laughs> It's, okay. Well, anyway, we're gonna we're gonna move it uh, a week uh, further ahead on the twenty seventh. So uh, uh, I thought it would be prudent for uh, uh, me and all of us to be here uh, when the uh, room is actually available. So, uh, anyways, uh, yeah, the Im next imaging meeting, which is the target challenge, like I just mentioned, is going to be on the twenty seventh instead of. Uh, uh, of uh, the 20th, the Thursday of the 20th. Uh, now I realize this guy, some people probably have, uh, there are some people that may take issue with that as far as that. That also is, uh, what's, is that an indoor meeting the next day or a record? Yeah, the next day is also an indoor meeting. Uh, will it be at the museum this time? Okay, very good. It's going to be at the museum this time. <laughs> so anyways, okay, I'll stop rambling. Anyway, uh, anybody got anything else they'd like to share? So just real quick question, Chris, on the bringing equipment. That's of course uh, optional, right? I don't, I don't necessarily want no, to bring that. You don't have to. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't well, bring your whole setup. You know, just bring the optics and the camera that you use. Uh, that's that's as far as I would take it. Unless you want to yeah. bring your whole setup, hey, more power to you. <laughs> that thing's heavy. You know, so, I might bring a camera lens, a small small rig. It's easy to transport. All right, thanks. Well, you can bring your barn door tracker. That was kind of interesting seeing those images oh, yeah. right there. That'd be, I, that's a great idea. I'll bring it. Yeah, that'd be a nice thing to see. Um, or hell, Johnny Horn, he can bring his uh, observatory. <laughs> All right, that's bad. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah. Uh, Chris, anyway. heavy. Chris, I'll get you the recording as soon as I can. Okay. All right, well, with that said, uh, uh, if anybody doesn't have anything else, uh, I think we'll call it a night. All right. No? Thanks, everyone. Okay, good night, everybody. Good night.